Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Harris and I'm an investment associate and CFA charter holder and on this channel we discuss finance, wellness and self-development. In today's video I'm going to outline my top three tips for absolutely crushing the CFA charter. So why am I in a position to share that? Well I completed the charter this year having passed all three levels first time within three years scoring in the 90th percentile in the first two levels and if you hang around today I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So I'll start by describing what the charter is and why you might study it and then I'll go into the three tips. So number one on the list is understand your motivation, number two is study strategy and number three is exam technique. As you can see the third one on the list is pretty important. It's only there because it makes chronological sense so I'm not withholding it just to keep you watching but I'm going to share some real gems so hang around and you won't be disappointed. So what is the charter? Well it's a professional qualification awarded to those who undergo a rigorous training program in the fundamentals of finance. It spans three levels across three to five years covering asset classes such as equities, bonds and real estate, risk management and formal derivatives, economics, financial analysis, portfolio management and a whole host of other financial concepts. It also requires you to have a minimum of three years of experience in a relevant domain and it is widely regarded as a gold standard investment designation. But it requires a significant amount of sacrifice and dedication. So why subject yourself to that? So there are four main reasons. Number one is unsurprisingly comprehensive financial knowledge. The you know, curriculum is vast, you'll study a broad range of financial concepts and that will equip you with the knowledge and skills to excel in a variety of roles across the finance landscape. Number two is professional recognition and career development. Those three letters, they not only feel great, they help you stand out versus your peers, they help you access roles such as investment research which require CFA and they often lead to a higher salary. Now that's not always the case, depends on the individual, but given the knowledge and skills you have and the experience, it's a pretty good indication of your earning capacity. Number three is networking. Once you complete the charter, you join an exclusive club of like-minded individuals and you can really leverage that to propel your career. And number four is personal growth. The CFA charter is difficult, it requires a lot of discipline, you develop strong problem solving and critical thinking skills, and you commit to a lifetime of learning. So with that behind us, let's dive in to the top three tips. So moving on to tip number one, and that is understand your motivation. This is a simple one and not the most glamorous, but extremely important. Why are you doing the charter? Completing it requires a significant amount of sacrifice and dedication roughly 300 hours per level across three to five years and that comes at the expense of social time, leisure time and essentially at the expense of things you enjoy doing. So you've got to enjoy doing the charter. So ask yourself, do you have a genuine interest in finance? Do you find yourself wondering what makes the world tick? Do you pick up financial publications such as the FT or Bloomberg? Do you pick up finance books and just start reading? Are you genuinely passionate and curious? Because if you're not and the reason you're doing it is because you've heard it's a good thing to do or because of the three letters, I'm sorry to break it to you, that's probably not enough to get you out of bed in the morning before work or keep you working late into the night after it, which is what's required to complete the charter. Remember, passion and curiosity are going to get you through this journey, not the promise of the three letters. So spend some time reflecting. So now that you've decided to commit to this journey and become a prisoner, let's move on to tip number two, and that is study strategy. So this is where we'll dive into the detail. Studying for the CFA Charter requires a different approach to school, college and university, mainly because you'll be working alongside it so you'll have a lot less time. The curriculum is vast, the levels build upon each other, the amount of assumed knowledge increases and it becomes increasingly application and then evaluation based, meaning that strategy is everything. You've probably come across a lot of people who've tried the hand at level one, maybe even made it through to level two and then failed and they said it was the most horrible experience of their life. Well, the strategy was probably wrong and they probably crammed. So I'm going to help you with the strategy that helped me land first time passes and 90th percentile scores. So let's start with prep providers. Who's going to teach you? Don't be tempted to go with the big names or the ones that your employers recommend. Just because they're well known doesn't mean they're the best and that includes the likes of Fitch, Kaplan and so on. Your employers probably have a relationship with these guys so directing candidates towards them is tax efficient but that's not necessarily in your best interest. So I'd recommend doing some research, finding one that fits your style, one that has pedigree and one that cuts through the BS which is half the challenge let's be honest and I have two suggestions for you here and I'd recommend using them both. So number one is Mark Meldrum. You've probably heard of him, probably seen his videos on YouTube or his famous Reddit forum and let's be honest he's a legend. So Mark is a Canadian provider and he is a veteran of the industry. He has experience as a trader, fund manager, business owner and he has a PhD so ultimately he has immense pedigree and he's uniquely positioned to help you understand the concept. His lecture materials are brilliant 
They're sprinkled with humor, which make them entertaining and engaging. He provides seminars for the most complex topics, and he provides review videos, which hit the highlights, keep the content fresh in your mind, and help you prepare for the exam. He's also very economical, with each level costing between 310 and 390 US dollars, which is around 250 to 300 pounds considerably less than the likes of Fitch and Kaplan, which price at a thousand plus. And then I would recommend using a second prep provider, IFT World. This is an Asian provider, and I would highly recommend you use them for their notes. They also provide lecture materials, but there's no point paying for that given you're getting excellent material through Mark Meldrum. However, their notes are absolutely superb. They are concise, well presented, and straight to the point. They help you focus on the most testable material, and they save you a ton of time. Now, I know there's some of you out there who think that writing your own notes is the most effective strategy when it comes to learning, but actually it just wastes loads of time. You can still write your own notes for the more complex material, or you can annotate the main notes, but writing out all the notes from scratch is a huge waste of time. One of the main reasons this is a challenging endeavor is because of the fact that the curriculum is so vast and that you're working alongside it. So you need to find efficient ways of working. The notes are around 90% synchronized with Mark Meldrum's lectures, which is good enough and you can fill in the gaps by hand. And I would also recommend you get the high yield notes, which are a condensed version of the main lecture notes and they apply the Pareto principle, focusing on the 20% of the material which is most testable and almost always comes up in the exam. The notes cost around 250 to 300 pound, which in tandem with Mark Meldrum's lectures, brings the total cost to around 600 pound, which is again, considerably less than the likes of Fitch, which cost over a thousand. The second part of study strategy is learning techniques. Here, it's key to understand things from first principle. As I mentioned at the start of the tip, the CFA curriculum is vast, each level builds on the previous level, and it becomes increasingly application and evaluation based. This means level one matters, so don't cram it. There's a temptation to do so because you can at level one, given the exam is primarily recall based. However, that does not hold true for the other levels and you will be found out if you skipped over those initial concepts early doors. Be curious and be diligent right from the off. I'd also recommend starting with the hardest topic. Don't be tempted to start with chapter one, page one, which is ethics. That is not the hardest topic. Start with the likes of fixed income, derivatives, and economics, because they will take you the most time to get your head around. You need to do at least two reviews of this material, meaning you need to give yourself the longest possible time frame to absorb the content and then revisit it. In terms of time frames, I'd recommend six months for level one, followed by one year windows for level two and three. So that allows you to have a little break after the exam and then six months of solid study is required. First time around, I recommend you pass through the curriculum at a high level. Don't snag on details, pass through it, get a good overview of the curriculum and then you can come back and drill deeper. A good analogy for this is if you were asked to navigate a city, would you like to be dropped at street level and asked to navigate from there? Or would you like to be given a bird's eye view map and then dropped at street level and go from there? You'd rather the latter. I'd recommend one to two hours a day, four to five times a week, and that should be done in the morning. This taps into two things. Firstly, your ultradian rhythm, which is a condensed version of the circadian rhythm and governs how long you can effectively study for. The cycle is roughly 90 minutes and dictates your brain's permeability when it comes to new information. And by doing it in the morning, you are biologically at your freshest. I know some of you say you study better at night. There are certain tasks you can do better at night, but cognitively intense ones like this are actually best done in the morning after you've slept, given the spine has released a bunch of fluids that have cleared the brain of debris that accrued over the previous day. Plus, doing it in the morning makes sure nothing gets in the way of study. If you start the day, other things like work, gym, family commitments, they will get in the way. This way, you pay yourself first. Ultimately, consistency over cramming. If you cram, it will compromise the quality of your study and your life. Moving on to tip number three, and that is exam technique. So you've been through the curriculum at least once, hopefully twice, now you're in the last one to two months, how do you prepare for the exam? Well, at this point, you should be using review videos and the high yield notes. You don't have time to go through the curriculum all over again. You now need to focus on the most testable material and on keeping the content fresh in your mind. Mark Meldrum's review videos are brilliant for this. They hit the highlights, they're digestible, and you can watch them while studying or more casually when you're doing things like eating dinner. The high yield notes are super digestible and together they help you go through the curriculum at least twice more in those last one to two months. I would attempt as many questions as possible. Now that sounds obvious, but which questions do you do? Well, there are huge question banks on CFAI's portal. These are most representative of what's in the actual exam and arguably they're actually a bit more difficult and that will prepare you very well. And this is also where you convert knowledge to application. 
So don't be worried about using materials alongside it. This is a big mistake people make. They try and do the questions without referring to the curriculum and when they get them wrong, they're demoralized. But in reality, it's very difficult to actually recall and apply the content, especially when you haven't yet converted the knowledge to application. Doing this will also help you focus your attention on your weakest subjects because you'll probably make the most mistakes there. So then you can go back to the curriculum and study that again. Don't be demoralized if you get questions wrong. The most important thing is your trajectory is trending upwards. Okay. So now you've been through all the reviews, how do you tackle the exam? Well, I've got two tips here for you. Number one, and you will have heard this one before, is read the question. I know that brings back bad memories. We were all told that in school, college, etc. We all didn't do it, including me, and we hope we'd never hear that again. Well, here I am to remind you, and it really matters here. CFA are notorious for being subtle and smart in the way they shape the question, and they will slip in things like most or least likely in italics, and if you're reading quickly, you will skim over that, you will miss it, and now you're thinking on the wrong side of the coin, and you make mistakes. You have time in the exam. They say you have roughly one minute per mark, but in reality, some questions will take you less than that, and you'll have time in the bank to utilize on other questions. So don't panic, slow down and take your time. And that leads me nicely onto the second point. Utilize the flag function and canter through the exam. You mustn't waste time on questions where the answer doesn't come immediately to mind. If you pass through the exam, flagging the ones that you need to come back to, you can probably answer 40 to 50% of the questions first time round without doing too much thinking. And now you have more time to focus on the questions that you find more difficult. Even second time, pass through the remaining questions, flag again, and answer what you can. And by doing this, you will whistle it down to the last 10 or 20%, which are the most difficult. And hopefully by this point, you've got the majority behind you and you're confident about that. And so you can focus the remaining time on those slash doing the review. Make sure you answer all the questions. You don't get negative points for getting any wrong, but you certainly lose marks for not completing the question. And by doing this in the exam, you increase your chances of completing it and scoring as high as possible. There you have it, my top three tips for absolutely crushing the exams. Remember, completing the charter requires discipline, perseverance, and a strategy and hopefully I've helped you with the latter and if you like this video hit the like button and hit subscribe for more content like this thank you and see you in the next video